Whoa, look at that. It's eight o'clock on a Wednesday. That means it's time for this week at Gear Report, where we talk about everything that's been published since last week and stuff that's going to be published pretty soon, um, which would be a pretty quick show if it's just stuff that has been published. You know what? Let me change the, the way this looks, because there we go. <laughs> I mean, we could go back to here, but <laughs> half of a. Uh, Jeremy, yeah, we'll do. <laughs> See if we can make that look a little bit better. So, um, yeah, I mean, the the question on everyone's minds today, I'm sure, all day long, just fretting, is the show going to be on tonight? Yes, it is. All right. Even though we don't have a lot to talk about this week, because somebody did something uh, th that not everyone would probably classify as intelligent, and... Uh, has been preoccupied trying to put out fires and deal with that, the, the issues created by that. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Today's what, 23rd? Does that mean, I got to see what the date is here. 16th. Okay, so we've had, oh, we have had a couple things published since last week. We talked about the shell sorter. All right. So let me share the screen here. While I am trying to do the organizational stuff that I'm supposed to do before the show, uh, why don't we go around the room for some introductions? So we'll go clockwise on the screen to carry me. Uh, <laughs> or maybe we Jeremy, won't. Jim, Jeremy. That sounded really uh, <laughs> pixelated on this end. No, well, it was it was supposed to be like Casey Kasem. It's like my white guy radio voice. Um, so that's what I was using there. Did it not sound more professional? It it sounded like a robot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wow. like your internet slowed down tremendously right when you started talking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that takes skill. Lots of skill. Yeah, we're yeah. in the country, Jeff. What's up? I said we're in the country. Our services not like you city folk. Yeah, yeah, I got you. We but but to your direct question, we didn't get any of the intro. It it <laughs> got uh, your internet kind of went and then we well, were it's, left. Um, it's Jeremy. It's Kim and Jeremy down south off road and outdoor. Down south off road and outdoor, and a badass Santa Claus uniform pajama. Yeah. Wow. Good. Look at the butt. Boom. <laughs> Don't stop believing. <laughs> All right. See, see, there's our uh, signature quote for, for this episode. Look at the price. <laughs> yeah. And um, I don't know if I should assume that uh, Jason was like, oh, no, I'm going to have to talk. And he's like, I'm bailing. I'm out of here. It's too much pressure. He was having an he's audio uh, issue. So I thought he was going to do the longest impression of a mime. Yeah. But he dropped out. All right. Well, while we're waiting to see if he joins us again. Buck has said, Merry Christmas, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. So, hey, Merry Christmas to you, too. All right. It's uh, it's that time. It's that time of year, isn't it? <laughs> it is. All right. So I've been stalling, waiting for Jason to come back. I'm just going to assume that he is frantically working on some sort of IT issue, or he just said, eh, screw it. I give up. Yeah. One you. of the two. I'm sure it's one of the two. All right, so we will have three things to talk about before we get into the fiasco that is my life, because um, I have a feeling we're gonna we're gonna end up talking about that here shortly. So the only reason uh, we signed on, yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, the only worthwhile reason. Um, and and you guys can talk about the interview. Why don't we do that first? All right, let me go back. Oh, I heard the little ding that means someone's trying to join us. Oh, what's going on, gentlemen? Yeah, I made it. You did. You did. So I didn't tell them. I I signed into the green room, and you know the little countdown that goes before the show. 16 seconds yeah. before show start. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and Jason was here, but his audio wouldn't work. And so he's not here. Uh, and Jose Juan and I were just over at the warehouse um, because I can say at the warehouse now, because Gear Report is big enough to have a warehouse. 
Um, After this week, I was supposed to. Oh my goodness! <laughs> was okay. So so let, let's just talk about I told that. You, I told back. you the wife is going to come down. <laughs> uh, she she was there. <laughs> she uh, her and the kids came to the warehouse with me this evening, and I was not uh, surprised saw, by that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if um, if we're being honest, it was under duress. Uh, I <laughs> said, "Hey, we're doing a family trip. Everyone in the van," and they're like, "What?" we're doing what i said yeah dress warm it's cold in there and bring a chair <laughs> yeah all right people are showing up so we already had the a team here to begin with and now the others are kind of filling in uh so we saw jose juan who is having a conversation there <laughs> with someone no and i'm, I'm trying to figure out something to prop up my phone better oh but Things are not behaving correctly. There we you go. Give me motion sickness with all the phone wiggling. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I know. There we no. go. All right. Here's the big test. Before we before we let Mitch say hi, I want to hear Jason. Oh, it's not working still. Oh. I thought we had the audio issue solved. He's trying. I promise you he's trying. Does he potentially have like headphones plugged in or something? I don't know. <laughs> but I would do that. You know, I am I am terrible for if I hook my Bluetooth speaker up in the garage and I'm working and I'm like, oh, I got to go do something. And then the phone rings. I go to answer it. And I'm like, why don't I hear anything? It's driving me it's nuts. And, why did I answer? Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, All right. ho, ho. I'm installing, no. but now that uh, the gun snob is here, we can start, he says. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Buck honcho. Okay, that's not how I read that the first time across. <laughs> I'll just go with. Okay. Uh, Merry Christmas. See, a lot hey. of people in the spirit here. Honcho Fett out there. We may have to ask, um, you know, let, let's put another topic we'll pin it to the board for later um i want to hear from honcho fett about his cousin uh making an appearance and being a key figure in the Mandalorian. uh but that's not for now uh yeah we'll, we'll come to that later all right where was that i get rid of that there we go now everyone's back um mitch would you like to say hi hello everybody you can always What's count on, on Mitch for a nice, uh, lively hello. <laughs> well, hello there. Yeah. So, um, do we want to try Jason again, just for kicks? Sure. Okay, I can hear you just super barely, better than the nothing before. I will uh, try one more device. Try one more device. I'm not sure it's the device. What's up with that? Sounds like it's coming. The the it's picking up the mic from his webcam. It's just that he's where he's sitting. It might not wow. be as loud. He might need to crank up the output of the mic. So the do you know? And I, and I hate to do this housekeeping stuff live on the air, but we're we're given time for more people to show up as well. That in Streamyard, you've got the cam and mic um, settings where you can go in and pick your audio source and do that jazz. Yeah, it's still not that loud. Okay, he's going to try one more device. In the meantime, we are, let me see if I can get to the correct screen. We will uh, We will ask Karami to regale, regale us of, with a tale of Ruck Rack interviewage. There we go. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to this lovely lady, Jeff. Kim, tell us about the Ruck Rack interview. Um, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it went it went well. It went well, my darling. Um, so we got the wonderful opportunity to interview Jason Morgan and Ron Harrison. Morrison, Morrison sorry. Uh, and, um, about the Ruck Rack um, that we have been toting around for the last month. And um, 
yeah, it was awesome to speak to those guys to really um, hear about their passion and their love for this product and all the years of basically blood, sweat and tears they've been putting into it. And, um, um, you know, the the process that it's gone through, the story and, and how it came about and how where it is now. I mean, it was originally designed for um, for Jeep uh, Freedom Panels and they have since turned it into what it is now where it, it is now a, a carrier as well as a bike rack and a table and it can hold flag poles and umbrellas and fishing poles. And so it's just a wonderful uh, multi-use all-purpose type rack that can be um, mounted to the tire carrier or to a bumper as a swing, um, as a swing out. So, so yeah, just a, it was a really great interview. It was very informative. We had several people chime in and ask them a lot of questions. And so, um, so yeah, you've got to jump over and listen to it. It is a little long and forgive us for that, but um, it we managed to keep it very entertaining. So um, yeah, I, I mean, we're it, hilarious. So who cares how long it is? You just sit there and you it, enjoy it. It didn't ever, I don't think it got boring at any point. So, um, so right. yeah, um, the most fun part was watching Jeff chomp at the bit because he wanted to speak and it took us forever before we'd let him talk. So <laughs> most important thing from this uh, that I like is it was created in North Carolina. It's made in America and it's assembled in North Carolina. And I love that. No, assembled in Texas. Well, they put it together. In North oh, Carolina. the parts. Yeah, you're right. My bad. I'm right. You're wrong. Sorry. Mm. Mark the calendar. I know. <laughs> I've been married multiple decades. I can tell you that kind of thing doesn't happen very often. The other thing I can tell you is it's freaking me out that I'm screen sharing and showing the video from that interview. And I keep seeing you guys in there talking and I'm like, why don't I hear them? I can see Jeremy. Oh, now Kim's talking. Now Jeremy, but I don't hear any of them. Why does it look like I'm talking when I'm yeah, and I'm, looking, and I'm looking down and I'm like, I'm not, I'm not wearing that. Where's what am I wearing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a professional operation here, folks. Don't don't yeah, the, uh, yeah. doing a fine job. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for arranging that interview thank you for sharing uh, a tease of it here hopefully some of the folks out here will go um check that out let's see i wonder what jeff got me for christmas i bet it's coming in the mail tomorrow or, or the next day or you know the next day i don't know just go wait by the mailbox that, that's certainly what i don't you know somebody do. said that santa wasn't allowed in north carolina so that might be the case Yes. Well, so how are they going to pick it up? The post office. Yeah. So it's U.S. post office, then it might possibly be more like two weeks. Mm. So with that. So it's something about poverty of the tent. Okay, we'll get to the tent stuff later, and I'm going to disregard the innuendo on that he, comment. He marked it priority. He put the word ballots on it, so it's sure to get to you. Oh. Oh, hey, Jeff, uh, have you asked for the industrial quantity of blue pills? Because that's what it's going to do. <laughs> to pop all those tents. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get to the tent discussion. Trust me. It's 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 a t cautionary tale of woe and poor judgment. And <laughs> no, that's all about loss. You know, winning an auction is good luck. Mm. I think I remember you starting the Two weeks ago, the video, the uh, the live saying, you know what? Some people are going to tell me I'm stupid and I'm crazy, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now, now, Jose Juan, now that you've seen that I had to not, not just seen them, saw them in the first load, first of three loads that completely filled the garage. Yep. And then saw me panic and go find a warehouse to store them in. And now you've seen the warehouse that has most of them. I think there's just one left at my house. Is this epic or what? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the best way I could spin it, too, is this is epic. It, it is. Sure. Epic can be good or bad, you know? Yes. Yes. Uh, for, for what you you want them in an auction i think it's a fantastic purchase if you want to put it that way but no, no, no. i'm muting him before he says anything else we are stopping on the positive 
I'll tell you, the little voice in my head keeps telling me all the reasons this was bad. I don't even need to hear it from anyone else. <laughs> okay, but I will <laughs> unmute him. I'll unmute him because that was mean. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. don't think of no, it as mean. I, think of it as it was funny. So, of course, I was going to do it. Co considering, con considering the opportunity, I think he's still going to it, – it, he has a good possibility of profitability. So, uh, I can't knock you on that. Well, look um, at that. Yeah, but, it's just going to take forever and two months to get them in the condition that I can actually have an opportunity to make some money on them. Yeah, I'll so, tell you what, Jeff, yeah. you have all the time you need. You're in lockdown. You can't do anything anyway. So, right. Mm, go back to Texas. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so. You, you want to hear about the tents a little bit more? So the first thing that no, I heard. We're going to come back to that. House, we're going to come back. No, we're, we we got to at least get through the stuff that's been published. So okay. where TJ is. TJ is usually here. Or or at least he phones in and says, I'm stuck on a job site. I can't make it. Um, I bet he thought we weren't going to do it because of Christmas or something. So My vote is liquor store. <laughs> You're probably right. Yeah. Uh, so, so what we have here from TJ, uh, another review of the gun G10 grips, this time for a Taurus PT 92. We've seen a lot of, uh, you know, Berettas and, and Tauruses. It's like, that's all we have at gear report or that style of firearm apparently. But there we get the Punisher skull on this one. And, uh, you see the pictures and it's a, it's a, what do we call them? Quick review. That's what it is. So it doesn't have a lot in there. He gave it four out of five stars. So you can go read about that if you would like more information. I can't leave it on there any longer or you will have seen it all and there'd be no reason to go look at it. All right. So again, trying to power through what's been published so we can get to more discussion. Um, all right. This one was mine. Um, DIY Humvee door striker and electronics box. So this was kind of neat. This was where I've, I've been doing the daily updates on the Humvee page. And I say daily, they're not really daily because I don't do something every day, but, but whatever day I do something, I try to put a picture up that evening or the next morning and talk about it a little bit. So here it, I got the truck back from James and the transmission works and I needed to put the doors on, but I didn't have all the door strikers. So you see these wire things here, the middle picture, actually the middle picture is the one I made on the right. You see the factory one installed on the door frame. And then the one that I made in my hand and how it was made over there on the left. And then, um, a box that I acquired that was actually a pretty elaborate, uh, battery charger, the, the batteries for the PRC radios that the military uses, they would install this charger in a vehicle and then be able to charge uh, three or four batteries inside it. Well, I took all the guts of it out. So now it's an empty box, but it's a military looking box. So that actually fits on the center console in, um, in the battle wagon. And uh, did I do a video on that? That looks like I did a video. I must have, because that's me. Look at that. Hey. I did. How did I forget that I did a video on that? So there you can see all the same stuff we were looking at before and the box. And I'm going to figure out how to fit all the different radios and whatever else I want to put in there. Go watch that video if you have any interest in seeing how that project might be or might not be progressing. Okay. But I've gotten a lot of requests to do more of the uh, Humvee project stuff as, as it's progressing. Instead of waiting, you know, for bigger things to do the videos. So that was intended to be a pretty quick update video to get out there and uh, just share that. Do, do I don't even want to roll the dice and ask Jason to say something. But I'm going to. I don't get it. <laughs> I 
I don't even have own you, a goat. How how did, how did have you tried powering it off and powering it back on again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I had to. I have to. Uh, the phone might be the better option if he's got a phone instead of trying to do it on a computer. Oh, that's true. He yeah. could do that. Just mute his, or he can just call in and just said talk before him. he's going to try device number three. Oh, so I don't know. This becomes like the ongoing segment within this show. He has okay. Now let's check in with Jason, and then, so we'll check in again if he can figure something out. StreamYard doesn't play well with Bluetooth earbuds. Okay. Maybe maybe that's helpful. I don't know. Yeah, that one looks wired. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. You Jason? know how they do it in, in the news reports? By then, hopefully in the next couple of minutes, he'll have a full weather report for us as well. So that'll be good. Hmm. What's the call in number he asked he to, oh, to, to dial in on the phone? Let me see if that's even available. I don't I don't know if there is a dial in number. I think for StreamYard, you have to use coming straight in. Email, email messenger. Yeah, I don't. If there if there's a way to give him a number to call in, I know like Snob uses uh, StreamYard. Some of the other folks, maybe. So if there's a way. Put it in the chat. Let me know so I can send him a number. Otherwise, you know, hey, thank you for joining us. I appreciate the effort. I apologize for the technology challenge. Not sure. Did you check the audio settings in StreamYard? Yeah, that, yeah that's what we were talking about earlier. So hopefully, um, and there isn't a way to dial in. So uh, when Ghost does it with his number and patches it in, he must be using some other kind of software to do that. I don't know. Um no, send, okay. send him a link over the phone or the uh, text or something so he can plug it up in the, on the phone. Mm. Good plan. That is a good plan. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves while I do that. I, I, can't. Did, I did. I put it in the private chat for him. That's the link. Ah, excellent. That, that's the link to this. To rescue. All right. Good job. You know, having Teamwork Jason the dream Pratt work. has has made me realize what a kind face he has. <laughs> yeah. It's just a yeah. kind face. <laughs> it is. It is. He's never said that about me, so he must mean it. Uh, <laughs> oh, Jeff, yeah. we say a lot of things about you. I know. I know. I deserve every one of them, probably. I was going to say that the, the most common term is sourpuss oh. for Jeff. That's uh, <laughs> oh, <my God>. wow. <laughs> I need you to talk to my wife because she never says anything anywhere near that nice. Yeah. Okay. So we finished the stuff that's already been posted, the recently completed reviews. Let's at least make a stab. What? Why does Jeff use StreamYard in this weird layout? You mean like the five people like this? Um because that's too small. That's better. Oh, I kind of like this way better. That's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's try another one. See what happens. I'm clicking through the different options at StreamYard. Oh, that looked like the other one. No. Oh, that was just me. That's the one. Oh. I'm good. All right. Let me get rid of that. They have one that doesn't cram carry me so close together. They do that by choice. They're like all handsy and everything too, but they try to keep it off camera. Um, this one's the best. Okay. Well, um, well, we're going to leave it like that then. So who has, uh, all right. I know, I know caramy has got some stuff coming up. Do you want to talk about that before we dive into the, trials and tribulations at gear report headquarters you know really there, there's so much to talk about but there's this guy we know and apparently i mean he's on the verge of divorce but he's got a shitload of tents to sell and i thought <laughs> we could bring him on the show and talk about his predicament because you're not going to believe this you can't make this kind of shit up it's a story that is just so unreal the gear report crew is going to love it yeah yeah he sounds like a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> that is yet to be determined. <laughs> mm, 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's more determined than you think, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but wait till we get those results back from Maury. <laughs> yeah, the good thing is that there are enough tents that at least one of them is going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so, and and with that, all right, I'm going to share the screen, and we're going to go. I'm going to do something risky because I haven't. I don't think I've taken any dick pics lately, so <laughs> we're probably going to be okay here. But uh, if so, who needs a YouTube account, right? <laughs> All right? Let me see here. All right, so so I've literally just brought up my Google Photos stream that automatically back up, backs up off of my phone, with in hopes that there's nothing no one should see in here. So let's start back mm -hmm. here. Oh, you can see some of the stuff in the review queue here and others. Yeah, All right, I'm going to show you this just because it was fun. All right. Here we go. This is, this is, what I like to call this little video Safety Third. And it's me riding on the back of Patrick's tractor down a steep, muddy hill. And he looks like he's dancing, bouncing to the beat, and he's actually just getting bounced around because it's really bumpy. Yep. <laughs> in Crocs. In Crocs. In Crocs. <laughs> Tactical Crocs. Um, they're worn out and have no traction left on the bottom. So, and, and the other thing I did um, at Patrick's, I traded exhaust pipes with him. He wanted the short one. So uh, I unbolted the, the short one off of my truck. <laughs> and uh, I, can, I can tell all that OSHA training went to good use, Jeff. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, and then uh, so I unbolted the deep fording exhaust, the tall exhaust off of his Humvee and brought it home and bolted it on mine. And there's our little micro Christmas tree. I thought that was pretty good. Some uh, some products in the review queue that I've taken pictures of. And then we get to the fun stuff. Um, so this this was setting the scene early where they've got the, the big bucket truck thing. Uh, bucket, it's not a bucket. What's it called? Let me make that one bigger. A big lift truck? It's like a front loader yeah, or like an industrial forklift. You know what? I don't like how I made that bigger. Let me try if I... Oh, I did it again. <sighs> okay. If I remove that and then add... There we go. That brought it back. Uh, you can see some of the tents back there and then the fork truck thing. And it's got the, ex the big extender arm. So he could put it, put the pallets on the trailer and uh, Patrick's almost brand new trailer that he had poor enough judgment to let me borrow. Um, <laughs> gotta love poor judgment, man. Poor judgment is such a feature in my life. It really is. Um, and you see some of them, this, uh, Jose, this is the, um, yeah. <laughs> the crate I was telling you about where they just dump the shit in there. And it's like <laughs> this everything completely crammed. Yeah. This tan tent that you see the, the remnants of it up here on the top is the one that we were working on tonight, Jose. Yeah. And then the green one is the one we were robbing parts off of. So all the broken shit was at the bottom here where they just dumped it in on the far left side in the picture. They just dumped it in there and it broke all the fittings at the bottom. So, and then the one on the right is too heavy. I can't even get it out of the crate. I'm going to have to tear the crate apart to get it out. But fun stuff. So that gets us to another topic. Um, oh, here we go. More of them there. It's me surveying my new kingdom of tents there <laughs> in the lot. And then the first load that we brought back to the house. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Uh, and if you, I, I would even be okay if you threw a sweet baby in front of that. I think <laughs> that is a sweet baby Jesus worthy picture right there. Um, and I don't know that that's even the most heavily loaded trailer we had. So uh, these are all bits and pieces. Nothing is put together and organized at this point. Well, they, in theory, Partial. they're bundled up. Okay. You know, like what you see, can, can you guys see the mouse where I'm moving it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is like a massive duffel bag with a tent in it. And this end of it looks good. Now the other end is probably wide open. Like this one here is a wide open end because they only half-ass put them back in. And I mean, that that's, 
abusing the term half-assed to say they half-assed did it. They like a quarter-ass did it. It was now, really bad. It seems like they would take better care of it because I think I saw a picture on Gear Report of what did the government pay for these tents? $10,414.25. Yeah. It's insane. It really is. So here we are rolling up to the house, um, which that crate hung on there the whole way back. It was kind of amazing, to be honest. It didn't come off on I-40 at any point in the trip. Look at that. That is glorious. Right. <laughs> and then we got them in the garage. We got them in the garage. There was no room for anything. <laughs> and I was like, oh, crap, that was one of three or four trips we were going to have to make. So the reason here that, that this is so out of control. Oh, here's the second one. You guys will love the picture of the second load. <laughs> so if you can see how many little um, dots are on this one, I wonder if I could zoom that. Oh, I can. Each of these is a pole. And uh, the tents that I thought I bought had 12 tips on them. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. This little section is how big that tent was supposed to be. This tent is actually twice as big as it was supposed oh, to be. Oh, man. 26 tents. I think I've counted nine or 10 that are the, the size they were supposed to be. Everything else is... Everything else is twice as big. The which Ant Mansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can you can seriously set it up and park a car underneath it with room to spare. The small one, like the one that we were setting oh, yeah. up, is a yeah. fifteen by fourteen. Yeah. And yeah, you can put a car yeah. under it. And yeah. the other ones, twice as big, <laughs> except for one. One is halfway in between. Um, so, yeah, most of them were supposed to, they were all supposed to be the um, HDT Base X 203 tent, the, the quick pitch expeditionary tent. And, uh, and then we pick them up and it's like, oh, most of these are 305s. Well, guess what? I had planned on the little ones, the 203s, that two people can pick up and carry. <laughs> you need four or five strong people or maybe six to pick up and carry the, you know, the big <laughs> one, the whole package, like what you see there um, on these two top pallets, either one of those is pushing 400 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So not, not what I thought I was getting into. And they're so much bigger. Um, they take up so much more space uh, that the first load Here's, here's another funny part of this cautionary tale. We fill up the garage on load one and there's no room. Like we could put one more tent in there maybe, but there's a crate in the driveway with three tents in it. <laughs> That's the first load. We go pick up the second load and I realize because of this little placard on one of the tents, HGT Base X 305 10, like, wait a second. 305, that's why these look too big. These are the wrong tent. These are too big. I go, oh, okay. And we got a shit ton more of them left. So we load up the trailer the second time and head home. On the way home, Bradley, who helped me and, and myself, are both <laughs> frantically dialing everyone we know, trying to figure out where we're taking them. We left the auction lot, didn't even know where we were going. Like, can't take them home. No room there. <laughs> Got to find someplace else to take them. <laughs> and, and ended up um, this old factory, four minutes from my house, uh, is empty. And I was able to get a hold of someone there, and they rent out some of the, the old production floor um, space as just storage space. And it's actually really cheap. And, uh, they had a forklift I could use to unload stuff, which as you can tell from this picture is kind of important. <laughs> yeah. And, and it actually, 
actually worked out okay in that regard. So yeah, we, we went back and got uh, another load and took a bunch of other pictures. And then I had to get the stuff out of my garage. Actually, let's do that one. Yeah. So you can see I used an engine lift to pick that up and get it on. And that was not as easy as it looks, you know, and get it on the trailer. So we filled the trailer up. And this morning, we finally got the rest of them out of the garage. Uh, without a forklift, we couldn't go too high. We could only go one level high. So it took two, three trips, you know, to, to get all of them put in. And uh, yeah, let's see. There's the base to one of them, like the floor. These tents have floors, which is kind of neat. Didn't know that. One of them had this little note in it. The finest rapid deploying tactical tent available. See, it's a tactical tent. That's why it costs so much. Yep. Breakage occurs from lack of training. I don't doubt that. Actually had an instruction manual book in it as well. Oh, that's an LMTV part. So, um... Yeah, there we are about to put some more in the in the dungeon in the basement of the factory. All right, here is my tent empire. And that is my son in the middle with his hands on his head like I've made a huge mistake, you know. <laughs> yeah, the tent empire right there. And that's so most of What has your wife said, Jeff? <laughs> I, I love you. You're the greatest <laughs> mate I could ever have hoped for. Why why do I not believe you right now, Jeff? <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, but the good news is the next wife will have this evidence in front of her so she'll know what she's getting into. You know, the great yeah. thing is this, your next wife, you will be able to set her up a home in almost every state. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good All selling really point. Yep. An amazing um, empire across the country. Yep, yep. Yeah, this <laughs> part of the plan to achieve world domination. You see, my son, again, I've made a huge mistake. Um, <laughs> and this is one of the tents that... Uh, we 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 expanded it and then ran out of time. I had to get him home to go to swim practice, which he ended up not going to. But um, but we had it. We we got it stretched out. So you see in the background. Let's see how what they look like. You know, bundled up, and then you pull it just like those pop up uh, awnings. You get on the corners and you pull it out, and it expands and turns into this thing. And then in theory, you, you lock the little things on the sides and then lift one side up and the legs fall down and lock. And then you go lift the other side up and the legs fall down and lock and it's standing up. But we had there were enough little broken bits under there that we had to keep like we, we never got it put all the way up. We got it put part way up. We're like, oh, and that rod's broken and that one's broken. And so it meant running to the one in the background and stealing parts off of it and crawling under this one to install those parts, you know, swapping out the broken ones for good ones. Um, so here's the question. What maybe that one that you are putting together on the ground was too broken up and you probably could have just trashed it. And the one that you're tearing parts off of was probably in perfect condition. And now it's not any longer. Mm. That, yeah. <laughs> you sound like a wife. <laughs> This is what I live with. Well, like, damn it! Who was the girl on the show? I mean, yeah. You know, I, they, I think they all have a whole bunch of flaws, and and you know. Whoa! Like, don't say all. Come on, you only saw two of them. Right. Like, like I said, it just that at least there's enough tense that one of them is going to function. I don't believe that's the case. I, I think that probably one of them is going to be cannibalized fairly heavily but it will allow to have you know the majority of them or if not all of them except for that one working so that's you know it, it's a good thing and a bad thing and, and it will mean having to go through all of the pieces and, and figure out how many you need to 
you know, butcher apart from one and yeah. go to the other. Yeah, and the good news is um, what I should have done instead of buying this whole lot of them is I know a place that that has some of these that instead of working out a deal to just buy one or two like I should have, I ended up uh, just doing this auction thing. But but if I had any sense, I would have done that. But yeah. I can go there and they got a they got a few frames. And the frames are, you know, the the fabric looks pretty good on the ones that we've had open. Yeah. Um, it's the frames are all these long little sections. And the sections, some of them are broken. Some of them have, you know, the pins that hold it together or have sheared, you know. So if I can get a good frame, then that'll be tons of parts to cannibalize. Or... The one in the background that, that I showed that had uh, that I was cannibalizing parts off of is the one in this picture, the green one down here, that when it was put in the crate, the bottom end, which is, you know, this is the bottom end of a big one that's sticking up. That end has all the little delicate fittings. When they slammed it down there in the crate, it broke a bunch of those fittings on the bottom. So it's a train wreck on bottom. So that's the one I'm cannibalizing off of now, which kind of sucks because the canvas on top looks brand freaking new. Really frustrating that that's the one they abused the worst because the canvas looked the best out of all of them. Yeah, fun stuff. So I hear what you're about to ask already. Everyone like, when can I get one and how much are they? And the answer <laughs> is, I don't know yet. Yeah. Ten thousand four hundred and how many dollars was fourteen dollars and twenty five cents? Okay. Yeah. Like at this point, he'll pay us a hundred dollars just to come take a couple of them off his hands. No, 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 no. no. I, I was much. telling Jeff that that you know how somebody has been doing uh, an apparition of monoliths somewhere in different places. No, I think that's gonna be the case. You know, tents are gonna start These showing up, and nobody's gonna know why. Yeah. Oh, that's something else. That's uh, so something else I did that I will post um, at some point is I walked around the auction yard and took pictures and videos of a bunch of the different heavy equipment that they had there for sale. And either some of those didn't get uploaded or I messed up and didn't do them right. But but I'll post those as short videos at some point, just these walk around videos of all the different uh, equipment. So, you know, if you always wanted to know what a, uh, let's see what this one is. Oh, what a, what a military bulldozer <laughs> look like up close and personal. You know, you'll be able to watch that video and see as I walked around it and show you all the details. And, and there are a bunch of different, uh, bulldozers and tractors and big water tank trucks and other big fuel tank trucks other other neat stuff we'll post those eventually so i really wanted i tried so hard i really wanted to have at least one picture of one of these tents actually erected because who doesn't like a good erection picture right <laughs> i really wanted to have that for the show tonight and I failed miserably. So y'all forgive me, please. I do. I... <laughs> I think that may be the quote of the show right now. Yes. Yep. Especially with the way you look today. You don't want to oh. shave. You don't care. You go to the Hobo Jeff's tent village and just chill. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Uh, that was a sky lift. Yes, it was. It was very useful. We like that. Yeah, they call either a lull or a sky lift or a sky tractor or stuff, stuff like that. That's what they call it in construction. At least. Yeah. So, so, Jeff, let me ask you a question. What are the new um, articles coming out soon on GearReport.com? Could you please tell me? <sighs> you make me do work. Okay, hang on. Um, yeah, I don't know, actually, because... Where's my mind been lately? Tents. Nothing but tents. Erections. I mean, of tents. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, I tried so hard to get a good erection that I could get a picture of for the show tonight. I just couldn't do it. 
I failed. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So fun stuff. We got the um, out, man. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stop the screen. I almost stopped the camera. It looks like Jason gave up on us. Man. He hadn't made it on the show very often. I was really excited to see him here. And he's been doing some Humvee projects. I wanted to hear what, what he's been working on, but it wasn't in the cards. Maybe someone will give him a new web camera or microphone set up for Christmas. I don't know. Maybe he All right. Be yeah. So um, what kind of fun stuff does everyone have for the holidays planned? Aside from writing reviews and publishing reviews. That's actually what we will finally get time to do this weekend. <laughs> yeah. We have, we've been saying we're going to do the same ones week after week, and we just haven't got to them. So, yeah, we'll get, finally get to slow down this weekend. I, I did all my present wrapping, which uh, that's a really good thing already. Yeah. Uh, then I don't know why. I think that I'm going to be looking at some tent erection whether I like it or not. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan. Sounds like a good plan. Probably. So. She's into it. it. It's the curse of living close. Uh, I don't remember if I showed these before or not, but I figure what the hell I'll show you since we're talking about, you know, being behind on video editing and stuff. This is, um, and this is really interesting too. This boat is like the hottest racing. It's a F-18 evolution. F-18 is a formula 18. So it's 18 feet. It's a racing class where different manufacturers make them, but they have a very, very specific and tightly controlled set of rules they have to follow when they make them. So that the, for these class races, the theory is the boats are all pretty much the same and it comes down to how well the sailing is done. Um, this is like a all carbon fiber and, and lightweight metal, uh, super hot. You know, I think he said the, the retail on this boat before they make all the racing tweaks to it is like $27,000 or something for this little sailboat. Um, so this guy... Uh, Hardy Peters owns, what is it called? East Coast Sailboats, I think. And he invited me down to go sailing with him and do some filming uh, for the other show that I work with on um, Joyrider TV. Uh, so I've got this uh, video. Oh, that was a screenshot. That wasn't a video, was it? I got, I got videos of out uh, near the coast. Um, at Kitty Hawk, we were just in inboard on the sound side. Oh, there we go, out uh, cruising around on this boat. And I'll tell you what, we didn't have a lot of wind, and that thing it it's it's so well tuned that we were actually sailing faster than the wind, which is crazy. You know, most sailboats, you're lucky if you get to go as fast as the wind. We were literally going faster than the wind at some points. Um, and that was really neat. Did I lose everyone? I bored you guys to sleep because you don't. Uh, no, I, I was just thinking you sell three tents. You got yourself one of these bad boys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's true. Yes. That's true. <laughs> yep. you, got, you got a good money making scheme on your hands if you can get um if you could start like a, another civil war think about it you can supply all the tents for for the southern for army the or better yet you put one of the tents on the boat you got yourself a house boat there you done. go done no or, or you could you know if you get really good at refurbishing this tent I mean, just sell them back to the government for the original price. And there you uh, if you refurbish them, you sell them for double the price. There you go. Yes. Okay. TJ, TJ rolled in late. Oh, TJ, you don't even know what you missed, my friend. Dude. I told him. I told him. I can't even. Comment, I told him. So we've had uh, a lot of erections in tents, and then we were recently at half masts. So that's what you missed, TJ. That was yeah, a pretty much. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yep. Got it. Like yo and crap to you too, Defense Dad. 
All right. Uh, yeah, missed it indeed. <laughs> same old, same old. <laughs> Hey, no, this was this was actually a little different than normal. Yeah. <laughs> Under boats well motion sickness, flying two. Ooh, sorry to hear that. With your defense, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so upset. Um, you think you're upset. How do you think my wife feels? <laughs> yeah. I knew it was there. I knew it was there. You didn't want to admit it, but I knew it was there. Yep. 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 <laughs> Yep. Luckily, she's she's happy in other regards, or or not. Who knows? I, I can say whatever I want because she's not here, right? <laughs> At least the, the mess is not that much longer in your garage, so that will benefit. Very true. True story. Yeah. She doesn't have to look at it. So. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Jose Juan, since you're the only one who here who's actually seen these tents up close, and you know, like you you've seen them, you touched them, you know they're real. I'm not just spinning some story because I'm bored. Um, <laughs> not that I ever do that, but when you saw them, you you'd seen them when we unloaded them. But when you saw them all there in the warehouse, were you like, oh my god, that's more than I thought? Or did you walk in and go, yeah, that's about right? Or no, nah, honestly, I kind of figured out what to expect after we unloaded the first trip. Uh, you know, so it, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. um, on the, our first conversations that you were talking about, you know, 20 tents. Uh, and then he added six to the account. Um, he, he just made it. Yeah. I told you we weren't going to talk about that. Sure. Okay. <laughs> So well, the, the funny part to me is that you had said that, oh, we're going to put them in the garage and I'm going to put one or two up in the yard. Mm -hmm. so, 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 now, so now for me, I haven't even seen it. Yeah. So, oh, she's fading out. She was in the middle of something good and she froze. <laughs> oh, she's back. back. She's back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she paused. She was like this. I was like, "Oh, is she saying I'm dead? What?" But, but you froze like that for like ten seconds. You froze. You froze like this. So uh -huh. it was like the. So I was Earth like, symbol. "Oh gosh, where is he going with that?" Oh, yeah, this <laughs> is the shape of the lot. So we're on a cul-de-sac. So the front up by the road is tiny, and the back is like really wide. And the idea was these tents are going in the back corner of the backyard. Yeah. yeah but they're too big. I can't get them back there. The ones that they were supposed to be wouldn't be that bad. You know, put them on a wagon and pull them behind the lawnmower or whatever. <laughs> but then we got rain for a few, a few days before I had to pick these up and the yard was soggy. And then we had a day that dried out a little. I was like, okay, we have hope. And then the day before I went to pick them up, more rain, lots more rain. It's like, there's no way, no way. Even the smaller tents, no way they were getting in the backyard. It was going to tear everything up, everything. So then when they when when we pick them up and get them home and realize two thirds of them are twice as big as they were supposed to be, it's like, oh man. <laughs> oh, hold on. What do you say here? I'm so upset. We just missed everything she said. Yep. <laughs> Me too. Because you could tell it was going to be good. She was starting to go there and then froze. The hands went, the hands went, went to work. <laughs> yep. That's when it yep. gets good, guys. Yeah. So the um, so the, the story that I hadn't told yet, again, another cautionary tale of woe and not too brightness. Um, in these auctions, if you've ever done the, these auctions, you can... Um, Rub it in there, Florida boy. Um, yeah, it, it, I was home before 10, so it's okay. Although I've been looking for an excuse to go out after 10 just to say, screw you, Governor Cooper. Um, you know, I because I don't need no curfew. And I haven't had one yet. Maybe I just go work on tents all night and, you know, screw him um, in a big ass room by myself. But clearly, that's a huge COVID risk. 
Um, so if you've ever done these auctions, then you know that um, that you can pre-bid, right? So they post them a couple weeks before the auction happens, and you can go in and review everything and then decide if you want something. You can set a, uh, I can't remember what they call it. It's not called pre-bid, but that's pretty much what it is. So I found a set of four tenths that look pretty good. It's like, oh, I'm going to toss a bid on that. I'll toss the minimum bid because these never go. I've been watching these for two years. I've been bidding on them off and on for two years. I have yet to see a single tent sell for the minimum bid. But you know what? I toss minimum bids on all kinds of stuff because if I get it, I get it. It'll be awesome because it's the minimum. So I toss the minimum bid on there and I go away and I come back and I'm scrolling through stuff later and I'm like, ooh, there's, there's more tents. Oh, and these are going like today, not down, not next week, but today. So I'm scrolling and, you know, not really thinking about, I put a bid on the one earlier because it's not like I'm going to get it. They never go for the minimum bid. So I put the minimum bid on the lot of 22 tents. You know, you want to hear the smart thing here? Because trust me, there's a smart thing here. There were multiple 20 plus tent batches. And someone had the sense to only bid on one of them. That's the smart. Because I'm telling you, it almost happened that I tossed some minimum bids on a couple others, thinking out if I if I bid on four or five lots, I'm bound to get one of them, right? But not all of them. Why well, I, I bid on two lots, one that day, put the minimum bid, walked away, forgot about it. Didn't know until six hours later when I get an email from Gov Planet saying, "Congratulations, you have a high bidder." Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> "Really? How did that happen? Like they, these never go well." I know now why is because twenty two of those big ass tents is too much to deal with, and most people had sense not to do it. So, so then. I'm sorting through all of the logistics of how do I do all this? And, and should I hire someone to go pick them up? Should I rent a trailer? Should I buy something? Like I was about to buy a trailer, use it for a week and sell it. Um, which may not have been a bad idea, but uh, a week later in the afternoon, I get that same email again. Congratulations, you're the high bidder. I'm like, what, what the fuck? I didn't even bid on anything. I'm like, oh, oh, right. I did <laughs> bid on something the week before, but it was the minimum bid. How did I? I've been bidding for two years on these tents. I put the minimum <laughs> bids in. On two lots, on both of them. So 22 in the first lot, four in the second lot. Um, and you would have been happy with just the four, wouldn't you? I'd have been thrilled with four. I'd have been even more <laughs> thrilled if the four were actually the four that they were supposed to be. Because <laughs> the bigger ones, while they're more valuable, are just more to deal with, you know? <laughs> It's, it's one of those things that you will set it up one time and let it be there because it's going to be your storage area for the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's you, an idea. Set the, one of the largest tents up in your backyard and take and put all the others inside there. That was the plan. I was <laughs> going to put the one of the one of them. Well, they were all supposed to be the same size. I was going to. Um, oh, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that. Um, yeah. The, the price right now is my dignity. But, you know, it's not like there was much of that left to begin with. So we're, we're okay there. Um, Poor chance. No, but that was a plan is in the back corner. So, so the lot is pie shaped, right? Oh, we didn't freeze that time. Did we? This, uh, so on the camera, the gate is right here. Okay, I needed to put them in the corner on the other side, the far corner from the gate, because uh, there's it's a brick fence all the way around the backyard. You only get in in that one spot. So we had to go in on one side, go all the way to the back and all the way across. It was a mud pit the whole way, so couldn't do it. Um, and that's the risk is if I put them back there, all it takes is a couple good rains. And now it'll be two months before I can get them out. But hey, guess what? We're at the end of December. 
where we're not going to have any good, su really sunny, hot days for months. That's a freaking mud pit until probably, I'm going to say June. Yeah. June, my backyard will be dry. So I can't, I can't set them up back there, but I will put one of them up just inside the gate. Um, I have one of those portable, like shelter logic, you know, 10 by 20, uh, portable garage type things. And it's kind of falling apart and it's an eyesore and the neighbors next door, they really care about the aesthetics of their yard. And I'm telling you, they hey, hey, got Jeff, be... I hate to interrupt this riveting tale of woe, but, uh, Jason says he may have figured out his, his issue. So if he's rejoined, you might want to check and see if he's there. Oh, I was so busy yapping, I didn't see that he. Uh, that's kind of why I did it. He popped up it. there. At yeah, least someone can pop up today. All right. <laughs> I think my audio. Whoa! And we have audio. <laughs> Dude, it's a pretty good show. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. Um, all right. So let me answer TJ's question and then. We'll let, hey, we can hear Jason now. Uh, it's a good thing we, we kept the show going because we'll give him a chance to talk about uh, recent projects he's done to his Humvee because he's done a bunch of stuff. And, and there are probably a, a couple that I have in my video queue that need to be edited and posted from a month or three ago because I'm behind on everything. But and getting more behind as I struggle with erections and whatnot. So, um <laughs> <laughs> so what's the price you selling them at um uh side note i went to the same college as this guy <laughs> yeah so um yeah we weren't real big on grammar there um i don't know yet so here's the deal 26 of them i know what i have in them and um, <laughs> it better rain, Benjamin. Let me tell you, because this has made what's left of my hair is falling out. Let me tell you, in clumps. Uh, well, as if there was enough up there to clump. But anyhow, um, yeah, I got to figure out what the prices are going to be. I know what I'm into them for now, roughly. And uh, the real question is, I know per... 26 like i know what i have in it and i know if i divide it by 26 what i'm into it each but so far we pulled two of them out to set them up and they both had big sections of broken shit so it it, it may be that i'm lucky that i can piece them together and get you know half of them if so the cost per unit that uh, what i'm into it for just doubled so I got to figure out what I'm looking at before I can really price too many of them and sell them. Um, yeah, but it's going to be, did, I, I mean, I can tell you the price. It's all the monies. Um, or we could phrase it differently as, I don't know what you got. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, all right, Jason. So what, what can you tell us about uh, adventures in the northern Humvee land. Jason can't work with the mic guy. <laughs> the, uh, so uh, while you're having trouble with erections, I was having talking. Uh, had me all choked up. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, too soon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The Humvee, uh, your battle wagon three following projects and that uh, door strike, man. That was awesome. You really, uh, looks like you made a better one. What you would get. I shocked myself that it was actually kind of decent. Like I got done and I held it up beside the factory one and I was like, damn, how'd I do that? Yeah. Yeah, bravo with that. Yeah, uh, thanks. It's been uh we had the snowstorm last week and I got called into work. I had arranged a whole bunch of guys to go drive in on the beach. We were gonna do sand, snow, and cigars. Mm -hmm. uh, so I missed that. The uh, couple of guys actually went out last one. We had four really cool different trucks. We were freezing our butts off on the beach, but uh, we took the beach by storm. Project wise, I've been working on the EC hood, doing fiberglass work, which is oh so much fun. Uh, my wife and your wife should probably talk. The uh, I, I don't know. 
I set everything up in the garage and she didn't like the fumes. She didn't like me having to park her car outside. Right. I'm on that short list also. Oh my goodness. And the, but I think the ECV hood will be a fun one because it's a little bit of uh, fiberglass repair hitting the TM and uh, 24P out all yeah. the that I need to finish off the trim on the hood. Uh, so I've been uh, making a video. So we'll see how that turns out. And uh, uh, two of my buddies down that middle thing. Um, and the, uh, I was, that's, you only see three in the picture. There's another slant back that uh, was where we were taking the picture. And, yeah. Well, I was going to say, the other one just had good camouflage. It's there. <laughs> He's lurking. The, yeah. But we had, uh, yeah, that was nice. We're trying to kind of get local guys together. Yeah. Awesome. Or some kind of weird gang. The uh, but we've been having uh, a lot of fun. Uh, the the ECV hood is uh, my big project. That'll lead to a winch, and I don't know if I'm going to use a hydraulic or electric one. Other than that, I've been uh, trying to keep her clean. Yeah, I and I I don't I don't know how you said it. But just for the record, I committed years ago. I don't care how it's spelled. I always call it a wench. All right. I just think that sounds better. I wanted to pull the car out of the sand and bring me a beer. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. And other services later. Um, you know, like bring me another beer. That kind of thing. Yep. All right. That's a gang. <laughs> yeah so i think uh i think tj was commenting on the, the audio broke up a few times during that and it, it kind of made things out of sync a little bit but uh, uh but hey uh so what what was the issue what was the keeping the mic from working do we know so uh, i'm using apple products and uh my i not updated so uh i was watching Ooh. this while it updated, it was a pretty big update. So when they switched to the i uh, was iPhone 12, they made a lot of glitches and uh, messed this up. So Got where it. my device would connect, the done it before. The uh, I was wrong. Well, yeah. All right. Well, we got it figured out now. So that's awesome. Uh, good. Good to have you here. All right, folks. Um, we we have squandered over an hour of everyone's evening. Is there anything else we want to talk about, or uh, is it time to wrap this puppy up? You have to wrap it up. What's up, Jason? Fraction pictures. You know, you can't. So. Yeah. So, so we we had the pictures earlier of the the tent laying on the ground, and as we went to raise it found a couple more broken pieces and uh, and were frantically pulling parts off of the other one to swap them into this one. And I think we had it done and looked at the clock. It's like, oh, crap, if I don't leave now, I'm going to miss the show. Because I was up under the thing. Like, it was only partially up. It's pretty low to the ground. And I was crawled up under it. And uh, Jose Juan's handing me parts and trying to move things around. And James is standing there with the flashlight so we can see what's going on under there. And I said, oh, by the way, what time is it? And and Jose's like, uh, oh, it's 738. Oh, no. <laughs> so we had to finish wrapping that up real quick and then get the family back in the van and, and cruise that, you know, four minutes back to the house. So. Yeah, at least it's it's pretty close by in the end, so it wasn't that bad. But, but yeah, yeah, made it in the nickel time. I couldn't be happier with how it worked out as far as where this uh, warehouse is. And to be honest with you, the price they gave me, I'm like, crap. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep this for you know. I think it's gonna like for a 500 square foot area, it's gonna cost me like a thousand bucks a year. Wow. Nice. And I'm like, damn. I can buy more stuff. 
Yeah, I got a place to put everything now. That's pretty cheap rent, Jeff. You it got is. a tent. All you need is a stove and a cot. And dude, yeah. yeah. So, so when when the wife finally says, "All right, you're out of here," I got a place to go for cheap. So you I don't have to live in the van down by the river. I and mean, we I know we can find a pop up fire pit. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I just have to be someplace where Amazon can find me, and I'm good. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, last call for any comments out there in the uh, in the live chat. We appreciate all the interaction and the people who have uh, had the okay, dude. Had the had the poor judgment to uh, stick around with us this long. We appreciate you. Uh, I would like to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Of course, we can say that next week. We can get into Happy New Year. Um, Happy Festivus. I mean, let's be real here. Um, if, if we're not talking about feats of strength and uh, airing of grievances, then I think this holiday is completely wasted. So so that's kind of where I stand on the whole holiday issue. So, um, But you know what? If you're celebrating Christmas or, or Hanukkah or whatever, Kwanzaa, who, show of hands for Kwanzaa. Come on. No? Oh, okay. There we go. Yep. So, <laughs> uh, whatever you're celebrating, uh, I hope you have a great one. Um, and until next week, uh, I think, I think that's it. Right. Anyone yeah, have any promotional yeah. stuff they want to say before we go? Yes. No, you have any, didn't you just release a video or two? Cool. Jeremy? What's that? Oh, we off. We released See? two. We released two actually this week. Well, there you go. Jeremy's like, nope, I've yeah. had enough of this shit. I'm done. Just let me out of here. I have to see. Yeah, we Come released on. two videos, episode four and episode five um, on Down South Off-Road and Outdoors. So, yeah, we have two awesome videos. One is finally, 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 the Allegheny trip, which was our super long. Um, we finally got that released this week. And um, our big off-roading trip, the overlanding trip. And then the second one was kind of... Um, um, it's a, a little, a little bit more like glamping. It's a cat on a rock, but mm. it's, um, only powered by a wood stove. And it was amazing. It was effing cold as shit, but it was, it was still beautiful and amazing. Amazing. So yeah, mm -hmm. check them out. So you censored effing, but still said shit. Well, because effing's a yeah. bigger word. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I've sensed a pattern here. Whenever a hand gets up here, it freezes. So I don't know what it is. <laughs> the superpower you can make video free by just putting your hand there. Even the internet gets a little nervous. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, um, all right, folks. Thanks again. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that jazz. Thank you, everyone on the panel. We really appreciate you being here uh, and sharing some time with us. Everyone out there in the comments and and uh, in YouTube land, whatever. We appreciate you as well. As far as you know. So until next week, we'll see you at the range. You all love the range.